In this video, we're gonna talk about proving your worth. One of the biggest things we see with young strength coaches is this idea of you want to give everybody everything that you know. But at this stage, probably it's more important showing everybody what you can do and what value can you bring. That is the probably the most important part to think about as you're entering into this new threshold of your career of actually being maybe more of a full-time assistant or maybe moving up into running an organization or a program is understanding what your real value prop is, is probably what you can do, not what you know. So we're going to dive into that in this module. It's going to be a short and sweet one, but it's going to be one that's hopefully going to bring a ton of great insight in terms of strength conditioning. Proving your worth. Let's talk about what that actually means. So we just finished up getting our degree. We just finished up a bunch of internships. We have fought the good fight and now we're actually paid to be here, right? And we're gonna talk about this in terms of how to make a really great, long lasting impression for in our day one module. But in this one, I wanna get you set up to think about what your real value prop is as you are now embarking and becoming a strength and conditioning coach. It is not what you know. Right, One of the biggest frustrations when I hire someone is everyone bringing in everything that they think they know that I don't, and I'm assuming that I don't know that. And I'm not trying to be insulting to all the efforts that you did before this in terms of where you interned and what you learned in undergrad or what you maybe even learned in your graduate school. It is not a knock on that. It's just in due time, that is going to become more and more valuable, just not right now. Like your job in this part of becoming a strength conditioning coach at a new school or a new organization is to try to assimilate to this new environment or this new ecosystem. It's learning to work with others. It's learning to help others. And one of the things that we talked about all the way back in the introduction is the probability of us being replaced is going to go into this really strong dynamic of what we know is less and less important Comparatively speaking to what we can do. And here's the other th thought. I know you just read a bunch of books or you just went through a bunch of courses or you just really saw a lot of really high level ways to do strength conditioning. What is often forgotten is the countless hours of working with athletes, doing these seemingly small jobs that no one's really paying much attention to. You're building a skill set that is irreplaceable. It is people skills. And you can see this, right? You could feel that element of your biggest systemic impact is your ability to be out in front with other people. It's the interactive skills. And what you realize very quickly is that your probably biggest value prop in this stage of your career is your ability to help and motivate and guide and encourage and in, and incentivize and and just give a, a compassion and empathy towards the athletes or the clients that you're working with. That your best chance to make headway in this phase of your career is gonna go into what I can do for others directly in front of me, not what I can do behind a, by a wall like a screen or a tablet to that person. It is directly in there. Remove all of the things in between. Remove all the dressing, move everything else out of the way. Get right in front of that person and say, I'm here for you. I'm here to help you. And you'll look at it from a couple different markers, right? Like if you are working at a weight room, we have your own teams. What does your team look like, right? Do they pass this eye test? If I was going to shut the, shut the sound off and all I could do is see visually, do they respect you enough to show up on time and respect you enough to make eye contact and listen to you, right? Are you having a presence about you? Are you actually having something that I could say is your insignia from strength conditioning, right? That, hey, you teach cleans to hold that rack position for a three, two, one every single time. Whether that's right or wrong, do you have something where I could definitively say that is a Tim Karen coached athlete? That person trains to a full range of motion. They are crisp and precise in the beginning and end of those movements. They know exactly what they're doing start to finish. Right, what is your insignia? What does it look like? How do I say that is a Tim Karen program? 
And then finally, you're actually making people better, right? And that goes into a whole cascade of things, right? Your programming ability, your ability to motivate, encourage, your ability to explain and interpret, right? A lot of times we come out bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, try to come out and change the world with our programming, but it's too confusing or too much too soon. Like you've got to titrate up into this multi-level program or this thing with a, a massive amount of periodization and variable control. That all of that is well and good, but if you can't translate that and get people to apply it and, app and go through that at a high level, what is that? And that's coaching. That is our value prop. That's going to be your value prop from whatever phase you want to get to to where you're at right now. It's a great reminder for the people that have been doing this for a long time. It's your ability to coach is what dif differentiates you, right? And we'll talk about that as we move up in our career in the later modules is that idea that just because we're really competent in one area doesn't mean we're going to be competent and capable as a manager. But in order to get to becoming a manager, we need to be very capable and competent and be able to do the job at a high level. Do we have high level of execution? And don't lose sight of that. When you walk in every day and you're doing an inventory or checklist of what's, a, what's my objective for today, it should be centered off of coaching and developing people, athletes, clients, anyone that I have the opportunity to work with. That should be the forefront of what you're doing. Your value prop is that. If I'm assisting with football and I got two racks, those are going to be the best six athletes in that entire room. That when we people are looking at those six athletes, those two racks that I have, that they're going to go, wow, that coach can coach. That, that is a 100% a coach. That's the guy we want coaching the top racks. That's the guy we want doing the hard jobs. That's the guy we're going to give more and more to. That's the guy who's going to be a head strength coach one day. That's what you're looking for. If you have your team, are they looking like they're a bunch of Tim Karen robots? Do they can follow through and execute the plan with violent precision? Do your athletes come in and try to get more from you? Say, hey, I really love today's session. Can you give me some insight on nutrition? Can you give me some extra things to do? And we'll talk about this down the road, but there's no such thing as extra. It's necessary and unnecessary. If you're having your athletes do a bunch of extra work, you don't, you don't really, really serve them the way that they think they're being served. But those elements, right, these, these little snapshots, and as I'm a director of a, or I'm an owner of a business and I'm looking around, like, that's a person. And, and for me, when I'm looking at this and I'm trying to evaluate you, let's say that you bring me in and ask me to audit you and give an appraisal of what you do well and bad. I'm going to start right here. It's what are you on the floor? What is your ability to connect and interact and develop people face to face? That is the forefront. That is the, the show, right? If we're going to look at it from where our biggest window of opportunity is, it's right there interfacing with our clients and athletes. The behind the scenes stuff is very important and it's probably more of a labor of love on that other end, but our ability to organize and be effective from the start and end of that training session or that, that team session that's the real value prop right now. Proving your worth is all about what I can do directly in front of someone. All right, so I'm going to stop right here, short and sweet. Module of tasks, I want you to evaluate yourself or evaluate other people you're working with. So if you have an ability to evaluate someone else, start to look at these intangible things. Do they start their session on time? What is their delivery of the workout or that program on that given day? How does it flow from one thing to the next? Do they get through the entire workout? Do the athletes understand and comprehend what they're doing? Are the athletes skipping sets or skipping exercises or skipping reps? Are they inconsistent from one rack to the next? Do they finish in a certain way that you know they accomplish something? Are they better at something than they were before they started, right? What was the point of actual training session? And then from there, I want you to get evaluated by someone else. So not only do you need to have the ability to praise other strength coaches, understand what's good or bad, being honest with that feedback, you need to be able to take it as well. So that's your task today, is having that opportunity and appraisal for everyone to go through this. And what I'll do is actually send a cop, I'll put a copy of the evaluation form that I use for my staff to go through this and see, just give yourself a visual within the notes here so you can go through that. And I think that would be something invaluable for you, for you down the road to be able to say, okay, I want to be constantly evaluated to this standard and I want to improve, right? If you're not great today, that's not bad. 
There's an opportunity there. Build, build, and build. Take feedback, improve. Take feedback, improve. Isn't that what we're asking of our athletes? Isn't that what we did as an intern, as an undergrad, working through becoming a strength coach? It should be a constant and steady improvement. And what will happen is opportunities will go up, compensation will go up, your value will go up. All right, let's stop here. Let's go through those tasks and let's get to that next module.